Hi, I'm Mike, owner of the Ingroom in Phoenix, Arizona. So I'm going to make probably the hardest video that I've ever had to make on YouTube, and it's because of how emotional it is. So that title that you guys are looking at right now, and that's not even a title that I've come up yet, with yet, because that's going to come after the filming of this video, uh, that's not clickbait. So let me give you guys a little bit of what's going on. Uh, Mobile Fidelity started doing one steps. When was it? 2016, maybe? I don't think is the official year of the Santana Braxis. And at the time, you know, the one-step process kind of involves you are eliminating the father and mother. Therefore, you cannot make more than one stamper off of a lacquer. There's a lot of confusion online on how this is made. So you take a lacquer, you cut that from the master tape, okay? You plate that, but that's actually non-playable because that is the reverse of what's the, on the lacquer. But that plating becomes the stamper. You then take that stamper and you can make records for it. But like any stamper, time is limited and when that's destroyed, you cannot go back to lacquer. Lacquer is a soft nail polish like substance and when that stamper essentially gets pulled, the convert gets pulled off of it, that destroys the lacquer. So if you were to make another, mobile, you know, another one step, you would need to make another lacquer. Okay, so the tr normal traditional record process essentially makes a copy of that and then turns that, which is now the copy, again, is no longer playable. So then you have to make another copy to make the stamper. That then becomes reusable because you can keep making copies off of uh, the mother. You can make many stampers. Okay, and the reason I'm telling you guys this, this you got to bear with me. This is going to be a video. This is going to be a long one. So you have to... Uh, with a one step, you have to go back to the master tape many times to make stampers. You have to make many stampers. When Abraxas came out, I didn't think too much of it because it was limited to 2,500. You know, you can get a couple of lacquers made off of a tape. You know, maybe the label would care if you run it a couple times, maybe not. But when the numbers started getting up there, even as you see with the latest Michael Jackson Thriller of 40,000 copies, I knew in the back of my head, there's like, there's no way. I mean, I think everybody in the industry knew the, the label's not gonna let you run a master tape into pieces to where it's destroyed. That, that would never be the case. No label is going to do that. So my thinking at the time was they're probably doing a high inch, high quality, one inch, 30 IPS uh, tape copy and they're making, they're making the one steps from that. So that's kind of been my running train of thought, okay? I'm not going to make a video on that speculating because I don't know. You know what I mean? You got to kind of have some inclination of what you're talking about when you make a video. And I didn't know. And I know how I'm a huge reel to reel guy. I've got professional studio machines in my house. I know how good a tape copy of a reel to reel sounds. It sounds so good. I don't know if anybody can even distinguish. If you take a one inch 30 IPS copy of the master tape, play them blind on the same machine, can anybody detect? Heck that, I would say probably no, and I'd probably put even money on that. I doubt that's possible. We're talking really super high quality, okay? I'm not gonna make a video speculating that on that. Okay, well then, this past week, a lot of information has come out to me. It really hasn't been made publicly available yet, and Again, I'm going to, these are my opinions. I am speculating on here. I do not have 100% information, but I've got from pretty reliable sources, pretty accurate information. And essentially that information is everything that Mobile Fidelity has done going back to 2015, well before the one step, is got some sort of digital step in it. So it's not cut from the original analog tape, or it is from like a DSD file. So when I first heard that, I kind of laughed it off. The more and more people that contacted me, the more and more sources I heard it from, you know, you, you got to take it serious at this point. And I, in my heart, without being validated by Mobile Fidelity themselves, and I'll, you know, I did contact them, I'll tell you about that in a minute. I am, it was truly disappointing. You know, it makes me put into question things. And I mean, I've thought about this a little bit. Okay. So in my head, 
If 2015, everything you've done has been from either a DSD file or digital in a way, you know, not cut from the original master tape, my first thought is, you know, I was lied to and I was deceived. Went on their website, just like a lot of other labels, Mobile Fidelity does never say these things are cut from the original master tape. So I'm like, all right, well, that would make a little more sense if, and I've been a proponent of this for years, I've been talking about this. You have to say cut from the original analog master tape. There's no, there's no skirting around that legally. If you're cutting it from the original analog tape, I guess theoretically you can have a digital preview head in there, but those words to me are the most concrete as far as what you're getting. Not remastered from the original master tape, none of that. So, but with Mobile Fidelity, I had kind of always assumed that they were always using master tapes, but on their website, it just says remastered from the original master tape. And then I had to think to myself, well, Mobile Fidelity, and I'm not gonna change my opinion on this, whether these records are digital or not, they have made some of the absolute best sounding records in my collection the last five years. I would say this is probably the biggest jump in quality of any single record I've ever heard in my life. Meaning the second best copy of this sounds like an eight track compared to this thing, okay? So I had to kind of like rectify that in my head. Well, if this is a DSD or this is a digital record of some kind, it's like, did that change my opinion? Earlier before I filmed this video, I went back, I listened to the record. It's like, no, it's still, I'm sad and I'm disappointed if this is true. And again, I have a really, I'm not just, I'm not pulling stuff out of my, you know, my hat, guys. I've got this on very, very credible sources and multiple sources. If this is the case, it still doesn't change the fact how good it is, how good a lot of these things sound, the Marvin Gaye one step, the Charles Mingus one step. Uh, I did reach out to Mobile Fidelity for comment. Mobile Fidelity won't comment to me. Mobile Fidelity's comment to me is our mission as a label and as a hi-fi company is to make the absolute best sounding record possible and bring that to market. That seems noble. Uh, they've done that in a lot of cases. So I, I'm trying to weigh this in my head. In the last, did they ever say that these one steps were cut from the original master tape or did I assume that? I'm not 100% sure. This is all very new and this video was filmed rather fast. I don't know. Maybe they have along the lines. I don't know and I can't point to a time off the top of my head in the last hour or two when I decided to make this video. I'm not 100% sure. But, so I can't, was I, again, I'd love to get your guys' comments on this. I'd love to get your guys' opinion on this because if this is digital, what does that change? I, I don't know. You could see where I come from. So I'm a consumer like you guys, and I am never afraid to take any manufacturer to task for a subpar product. I can't say that this is a subpar product, and you guys know how much I absolutely positively despise digital, because digital for most manufacturers is an absolute excuse to put out an absolute crappy product. But if you're using that as a means to make the product better, it's like, I'd love to know what your guys' opinion is on this. Again, this is all very fresh. I, this hasn't had a lot of time to percolate around in my head, but if we've essentially gotten nothing but digital records from Mobile Fidelity in the, since you know seven years, you know, I love to know what you guys think about that. Does it change your opinion on certain records? Does it make you want this one much less? Have you ever heard this? Do you feel differently about it? Uh, again, this is all still very fresh. It's still percolating in my head. I think now more than ever, we need to have, again, I contacted Mobile Fidelity. I wanted a, a statement on this. There is no statement other than that. And I mean, uh, I would love to see now more than ever, Intervention I think is the label that does this absolutely the best. If you look on the back of an inter Intervention record, it has kind of a Neil Young sparse code hybrid to where it gives you the source information on the back corner of the record. I think if you are an audiophile label in 2022, going forward, 
This is an absolute must. I want to see that Spars information on every single record. I want to know what your master source was, if it was cut from an analog tape, if there was some digitization in the process, if you're Mobile Fidelity and you have a special name for the process, I want that referenced on there to where somebody can at least look up that process and I want to know what that process is. I think that is the most transparent and that is the most forward you can get. Not on a hype sticker. Those get lost to time. Not on somebody's website. That gets lost to time. You know, you can go on somebody's website and 10 years from now, that record's not on the website no more. If it's sold out and it's five times the price, information gets lost over time. These records will last 100 years. I want people to know 50 years from now what that record is, where it was sourced from. I, you know, that's what we really need within the industry. If you're an audiophile label, if you're an audiophile label and you're listening to me, this is what your customers want. It really, truly is. We've been going back and forth on this for years. I don't care if it doesn't jive with your artwork. This is what the consumer wants. The consumer wants to know specifically what is in it. If this is how the sausage is made, in a way I'm not too terribly disappointed because like I said, this record just rocks, man. And it's a demo record and you put it on and it blows people's minds every time they hear it. But if that's how it's done, I want to know about it. I'm going to keep pressing mobile fidelity on this. I want answers. I'm sure you guys all want answers. Uh, maybe this isn't true, but this would have had to been for this not to be true. I think this would have to be a coordinated effort by many people to get this information out there in an untoward fashion. And that is possible. I'm not going to say it's not, but I think at this point, if I was to have to bet my own money on this, I would say that this information is accurate. I would say that since 2015, Mobile Fidelity is putting some kind of digital step. Now, they do say they sourced the original master tape. So it might be, again, more speculation that they're getting a master tape and they're doing something, whether it's DSD transfers or they're doing something to significantly improve the sound. That's possible. We might be starting off with the master tape because that's kind of implied or more than implied in their advertising. Cut all analog from the original master tape is not implied, but the fact that they start with the master tape is kind of implied. How does this change my perspective with mobile fidelity going forward? Well, I'm not going to stop buying the records because in a lot of times I can just rattle off so many examples of how that's the best sounding Abraxas I've ever heard. The Bill Withers Greatest Hits is like the best I've ever heard that sound. Uh, the Dire Straits are the best I've ever heard it sound. Brothers in Arms, which we know is a digital record, that's by far and away the best sound, best sounding I've ever heard that record. So it doesn't change my perspective. I still want to hear these records sound the absolute best as possible. I do have questions. I'd love to be able to ask questions. So I've got the SACD version of this. Got an SACD player, a good six, seven thousand dollar SACD player. Granted, my analog system is a lot higher end, but this just stomps all over the SACD. Why is that? If these records are cut from some sort of DSD file and or digital file, I want an explanation of what I'm hearing because I'm not alone. Nobody's ever said to me, "Oh, that SACD man, it's every bit as good as the, you know, every bit as good as the record." So. This is a weird video for me to have to make because I would have never, in all honesty, made this video unless I felt that there was a huge amount of validity to the things I'm saying. For a lot of reasons. I would never want to cause a frenzy and mislead the public and get everybody all bent out of shape, okay? And I truly love Mobile Fidelity's product. I'm a retailer. I'm not going to just wildly speculate things to shoot myself in the foot. You know, I, I'm not going to do that. But... It needs to be said, and I mean, if that is the case, it's a problem, no doubt about it. And if that's the way you're going to make records, okay, you better keep putting out to the caliber of what you've been putting out, because they're great, right? So I'm guessing that probably wouldn't change. You know, I'll touch on another subject too, which has been a little bit of <coughs> YouTube controversy. 
And that has been, excuse me. Sorry guys, I gotta get some water. It's hot out there in Phoenix today. It's like a buck 20. I made a video kind of in response to another YouTuber on this record. I wasn't holding water for Mobile Fidelity on this simple cover. I was trying to be funny. It didn't come off that way. And I'm not trying, you know, I'm the guy that's going to go after the labels if something's out of line. I mean, that is not going to change. Uh, the only thing I was kind of thinking when I made that money is it was done to be funny. And I kind of was trying to ask in a roundabout way, which came off totally bad. And I apologize for that. But I was trying to ask, like, why are you critical of this basic mobile fidelity cover, but you weren't critical of ERC's Sharpie markers, Sharpie markered white stripes record. And I tried to do that. Here it is. If you haven't seen that video, go watch it. But uh, I was trying to pose that question. I tried doing it in a funny way. And I've got a dry sense of humor, and it didn't come off that way. Uh, does that mean that I'm thrilled by the way this cover came out? No. Would I have liked to see it to be foiled and bossed? Yes. I'm used to the way Mobile Fidelity has made covers since the 70s. They've been kind of along this lines, basic and no frills. So that was kind of my chain of thinking there. But it wasn't, and I, the only reason I bring this up is because I was not defending Mobile Fidelity. I was trying to make a funny video. The wife was gone. She was on vacation. I was home. I wanted to make a video. I was bored. But it wasn't me defending Mobile Fidelity. I'm going to always call it like I see it. And right now, the way I see it is there's a strong possibility. Very high double digits. Mobile Fidelity has had some digitization in their records. And I would like to see, again, if that's the case, and I will keep pressing them to try to get clarification. If they come out and say, Mike, you're a lunatic, you're wrong, you don't know what you're talking about, Mike's going to come back here on YouTube, eat crow, and say, I got a whole lot of bad information from a whole lot of bad people, and I apologize. This is the way it is. Uh, and I'll go on record and say that. But I'm not going to go on record and say that until I've got definitive, concrete proof that that is not the case. All right? So I'd love to get your guys' thought of, thoughts on this, but more so than anything, and I, maybe if I can put a poll question online, I'm curious, does this change your perspective on buying their records? Even though this record sounds great, would you no longer buy it because of this? Uh, I'm going to try to put a poll question in, in here. I know on a live stream I can do it. I don't know if I can do it on a, a static video, but that is the game plan, is to try to is to try. I'm, I'm curious as a consumer. And again, I'm a first and foremost a consumer. Long before I had a record store, I've had Mobile Fidelity records since I was a teenager. So I'm a consumer first and foremost. And so I'm thinking about this from a consumer's perspective, but I'm kind of curious of what you guys are thinking. Uh, maybe my opinion on this might tweak a little bit over time. Like I said, this information is wildly new, but I didn't feel comfortable just sitting on this and not saying anything. And then something happens and it's like, I knew, oh yeah, I knew that the whole time. Like I wouldn't feel comfortable with that. Like I would feel like I kind of let you guys down because I know you come to me for accurate information, reviews and whatnot. I will also say on a side note, I'm going to take down all the Mobile Fidelity records from my analog top 100 list, not because they don't sound great. Every one of them is worth an inclusion on that list, but the list in heart is all analog records that were cut, cut, not source, but cut from the master tape. So until I got definitive information stating that I am boning it up here, those are going to come down. So uh, yeah, like I said, very, very hard video to make. I'm very nervous doing it. Uh, I think it's a sad day if that's the case, but uh, what do you say? Until next time.